Hi everyone, welcome back. That's right, we're back in Studio B and it's been a, a couple of days. We went on a little trip and now we're back in the home stadium, if you will, and I'm looking forward to talking about what's going on. I got a major technical for you to not sleep on because this is, it's big. It's big and I just want to get right into it. And for those that don't know, and you haven't been, if you have been following, uh, this may not come as a surprise to you, but take a look at this. I showed you guys this chart a few times now. Last time we were down, where were we? We were right here. I said, we broke below, I expect a short-term rally. We have that short-term rally. Guess what I'm gonna say now? And for those that don't know charting, I'll make this easy. This is called the Bollinger Band. If I take that off, you have the 20-day moving average right here. Anytime you get above the Bollinger Band or below it, it gives you a good technical sign that you're either overbought or oversold. 95% of all values lie between the these two lines right here. And if you get above there, that tells you it's a very rare event and usually means, hey, we it got too crazy and you're gonna see it come back down. I believe we're at that time personally, and I'm going to be taking advantage of this for some of my long positions, moving them into uh, bonds as well as some inverse plays. And so I'm gonna, you know, I've been watching, we've been seeing it go up, but we weren't sure how high it was gonna go. We now know it busted through there. We're on that other side of the Bollinger Band. And last time we did that, we, we know what happens. It crashed all the way down to here. Now, the last time we got underneath, we know we went back up above. So it's like the tale of two cities here, the extremes, and that's what we're seeing. For those who like this chart, I do have it right here. It's on Moomoo. You get it for free. All you got to do is click my link, download, and all you got to do is put 100 bucks in. You get seven free stocks worth up to $2,000 a piece or five of them. You get up to $2,000 a piece for five of them, and you get the two AI draws. If you put 1,000 or more in, you get 15 stocks worth up to $2,000 a piece plus the two AI draws. So take advantage of that, that you can use that charting as well. And of course, uh, we have the Weeble right now, using the link down below, up to 12 stocks for any deposit. I don't care if it's a buck, I don't care if it's a, whatever you wanna put in there, using my link, we gotta deal with them, up to 12 stocks worth up to 30,600. And come on over and join me at the Patreon. You can see exactly what I'm doing. I put the uh, the buys and sells out there, my, my portfolios, you can see all that. Join the private Discord. It's a good place to go. Now, what happened? Well, while I was driving halfway across uh, the states and all, all up here in the Northeast United States, here's what we got. The markets went haywire. They went all green. It doesn't look like Christmas. This looks like summer. It's all green. You see green across the board. The NASDAQ, the Russell, the S&P, everything. Dow Jones, it's all up. And for those wondering, Mo, you got some of them inverse plays. Yeah, they got hit. But the good news is some of the other plays are absolutely loving it. Uh, yeah, and you can come in and take a look. The Qs probably got hammered 5 6% down if I had to uh, go out and take a guess on this. And you can see it's down about 4.92% a little bit in the after hours. So that's the danger, but it's my hedge. And remember, I told you it's going to float between two numbers, 38.50 up to about 42.50. We're at 41.09. So we're getting up to the upper end. I just showed you we're in the overbought territory as well. If anything, it makes me want to go out there and purchase some more inverse for, and just in case we have that downside, which I think we're gonna, of course, uh, and we'll see. But uh, as we talk about this, some of the good ones though, because you might say, well, Mo, it seems like it was a rough day. Oh, uh, depends how you look at this now, because if you come out here, my Tesla stock, 6.24%. I have a ton of Tesla stock. That makes up for a lot of pain. How about your 20 year? Was that up? 4.23% and I am loaded to the gills with the TMF. So that was another good thing. Uh, Synovus up, Vanguard up, Neo up. So it wasn't that bad. My my hedging was down. Only the, uh, what have we got? The uh, TQQ or the SQQQ and the other ones I have, which you can see over in the portfolios. I'm going to continue to buy into those for those wondering, and that is the long-term plan for that. Uh, I, like I said, made bank off TMF today, made bank off of uh, Tesla big time, and I still think Tesla can hit that $300 mark sometime this year, depending on what the market does. Uh, we can pull it in here, and you can see Tesla right now doing its thing. Uh, right now, what it, no, that's not the Tesla. Well, it will be someday, hopefully, 1800. 207.46, 6.24% up. 
Uh, over the last five days, 6.63 last month, two, only two. What's going on? What? Check this out. 91.91%. So all the Tesla stock I owned on January 1st have almost doubled already. So good news there. Now, last time we got up here around 214, we saw a collapse back down to 170. Now we're getting back up there close to the, that 214 mark again. So I'm watching. Everything seems... It's something to watch. I'll say that because for, for those who watch me, you know I believe a big time uh, stock market correction is coming down to the last leg. I didn't think it would happen until about summertime. I still believe that. This is leading up to it. To me, this is the last froth in the bear market rally. The average, and I just said this, and let's check this out just so everybody knows, the cues. Uh, the average bear market rally is 23%. So if we come out here, Put this up here look where we're at right now and that my friends is 23.39 percent from the bottom that we experienced back in december so oh boy i show you a and i'm just warning everybody i'm not here to try to you do what you want to do with any information i throw out there i'm just showing you facts average bear market rally is 23 percent the cues are at 23.39 percent uh the bollinger bands we know 95 percent of all all that action will be around that mean we are above the mean, which means over overbought. Uh, we also know that a lot of the banking stuff out there is not yet out of the woods. What am I talking about? Well, you know, I think Peter Schiff ha actually has this nice. Peter Schiff, we are on the cusp of another financial crisis. Yeah, the banking is not just taken care of. Not everything's hunky-dory and, oh, everything's going to be just perfectly fine. I have a feeling as we move forward and we... We'll probably have that recession. In my mind, it's going to happen. But uh, I think we have that recession starting, well, tomorrow. Why? Because it's April 1st. That starts Q2. I believe the recession, by technical definitions, starts Q2, Q3. That's the official. And then into Q4. And then by anybody's definition, by the time we get into Q4, I think everybody's going to be saying, well, we're in it. We're in it. Right now, we're still having that. Uh, some good news coming out there. What's the good news coming out? Well, if you've been watching... Spain inflation has, but core pressures highlight ECB buying. So there, the, it's coming down. I showed you guys some of these other places around the world that had inflation issues, and I said it could come back, and it did. It got sticky again here. I like looking around the world because it usually does come back to the U.S. then to give us an idea of what's going on. So you're seeing some easing around the world. I also believe it's going to happen here. Of course it did, the PCE. Uh, was better than expected. And so when you have all that happen, you have a market rally. But let's let's remember one thing. The leading economic indicators are telling us why. A lot of things are collapsing. And when things collapse and demand starts to drop and all that other good stuff, guess what happens? Yeah, inflation comes down. And of course, the cost of shipping has dropped tremendously around the world. Getting a container ship over from China over to the U.S., used, it went through the roof, and now we're back down uh, to those levels that make sense. And that's what I'm talking about in terms of bringing down the cost of getting goods and services to market are getting back to that, that pre-pandemic level. Obviously, not all parts of it, and that's why we still have that inflation issue. Uh, now, wages is one that has not gotten back to where we would like it to be. We're seeing wages still continuing to be an issue for employers. We don't have enough employees. The uh, labor participation is not where it needs to be. All that needs fixed. So how's the Fed do that? All right, so some of the costs of transportation is coming back down, but what about the labor costs and everything else? That's still being passed on to consumers. And there's some other issues, of course, that are still being passed on to consumers as well. So put all that together, it's coming down, but the last piece of the puzzle that the Fed has to break, and I, to me, this is, it honestly is the biggest key to the Fed. That's controlling labor. And I always know what everybody thinks here, like, hey, I'm working. I don't want my job just treated like it's a math equation. Well, if the Fed looks at it, uh, they'll say to you, we might have two to four million people go unemployed, but the dangers of inflation easily outweigh the risk of having two to four million because inflation affects the two to four million plus everybody else. And so in their minds, they need to break the back of inflation. And one of the big key variables in that is the wages. The wages are still through the roof. And that's definitely something that everyone uh, if you look at it, you understand the economics and everything, that it needs to be fixed. And so for them to do that, they need to get unemployment up to around 4.5%. And, 
And the problem is you can't just say, get it to four and a half, we're good. It's probably gonna go higher. They're gonna break something. It's gonna go through the roof. All the other companies start laying off just because and the, the belt tightening of 2008 to 2012 begins for 2023 to how long? We don't know, 2024? I, I hope it's only about a three quarter, two to three quarter recession and then we're out of it and we're rolling up and everybody's back to work and everything's good to go and inflation's under control. But remember when, uh, when, when inflation was transitory and all these YouTubers were saying, oh, it's transitory, it's transitory, they're just repeating the, the Fed. And then all of a sudden they found out it wasn't. They're like, oh, it's not. Like they knew. Oh, come on, guys. I, I watched those videos. It was funny how I see people flip on it. And uh, all of a sudden they act like they knew it. Wow, 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 wow. This is going to be the same situation for the Fed. They wanted to get a certain place, 4.5%, but it's going to go through the roof. And that's going to be a lot of damage that's going to hit into that recession and other things. So in my mind, it's not going to go away, uh, but there's other things to watch for. So, But the Fed will break the back of inflation this year in 2023. All right, what's the other thing I wanted to show you? Check this out. Uh, what do we got here? 15.67 is the NEO stock price prediction. And we can see that 49% uh, upside potential. I showed you this today as well, or yesterday. Now Tesla stock price prediction is only at 5.9%, which after today, it could be one more day and we're above that. But what do you usually see then? This thing starts to spike up. They always take it back up. They adjust it as the markets go, just like I do. When you have different variables in the markets, call it uh, quantitative easing in China, uh, direct stimulus checks maybe in China, well then Tesla stock's gonna start to go higher based off of that because they know it'll lead to more sales. And so you adjust it, you adjust your prices. And so we'll see how they do, but I'm definitely, uh, I'm watching. Hey, I am glad to be back in the studio. Like I said down below, don't sleep on that. Get your free stocks from Moomoo and Weeble. And that link's right below. And you can join here on the YouTube channel now uh, as, a, as a, a member down below to get your perks. Some of those perks include the Discord, the buys and sells, the, the portfolios, all kinds of good stuff. Or you can come on over to the Patreon. That link's down there as well. I appreciate you stopping by. Let's get out there and make some money.